Okay, we have a library of functions, of, of, of many functions, x squared, x cubed, 1 over x, 2 to the x, uh, the square root of x, etc. And other things can happen to these functions besides being translated around. And one of them is you can multiply the function by a coefficient like that. And if we look at an a, a real number a, greater than 1, we're going to multiply it times our function. Here's an example of that situation, y equals 2 times x squared. Now, we want in the beginning to just look at x squared. We know how x squared is graphed, OK? We've got a pretty good idea of how, that, how to draw that. We can do that without really plotting any points, although, of course, I contradict myself and plotted a couple of points there. I want to make my x squared look really nice. But I'm not graphing x squared. I'm graphing 2 times x squared. So when I put a point in there, if I put 0 in here, and I ignore the 2, and I put 0 in, I'll get 0. Squared is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So the function x squared and 2x squared share this point right here. But that's about the only point they share. Because when I put in, say, 1, I'm going to get 1. In other words, if I put 1 into x squared, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1. And then I multiply it by 2, so I get a point that's twice as high. I'm a little too far up there. Twice as high. And if I put in another uh, uh, point into my x squared before I multiply it by 2, I'll get points on this curve. But then when you multiply them by 2, they become twice as high. If I take this point, it's going to be twice as high. This point, twice as high. Okay. And so if I look at this graph, look what happened to my x squared. I missed that point there, but like this. It got narrowed. And it got narrowed down a little bit. I have a u still. Notice the, the general behavior is the same. It's still it's kind of the letter u, but it's been narrowed. If I, if I would graph the function y equals 3x squared, I'd get the same thing, but it'd even be more narrowed because each point of this thing would be three times as high, and it would tend to narrow this thing out just like that. So the way we approach these is if you've got a, 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 a constant times some function you already know, Sketch the function you already know, and then look at the constant. If it's greater than 1, then you can find points to the new function simply by saying, well, if we're, say, 3 times there, 3x squared, each point would be 3 times as high. And you just estimate. Notice, that the, again, that the behavior, the general behavior is the same. And it's, this is as important for what it doesn't do as for what it does do. And you're still going to positive infinity on this side, still going to positive infinity on this side. Now, if we move over here, we'll look at another one. Only in this case, a is between 0 and 1. It's less than 1, but greater than 0. Okay? And I'm going to take another one of our favorite functions, one we already know everything about. And that's the square root of x. And what I've really got here, I don't have some kind of fancy rational function. What I've got here is 1 third times the square root of x. So I'm going to first look at the square root of x. I'm going to put that in a dotted line. And then I'm going to say, well, what happens to it when you multiply it by 1 third? Well, if I put 0 in, OK, uh, I'll, I'll, blo I'll, hold, I'll block out the 1 third. If I put 0 into just the square root of x, of course, I get the square root of 0, which is 0. And if I multiply 1 third times 0, I still get 0. So these share this point. The square root of x and 1 third the square root of x share this point. But that's the only one they share. If I put, say, 1 in here, each point's going to be 1 third as high, so it'll be 1 third. Here I'm as 1 third as high, OK? 1 third as high. So the behavior is similar, but look, it's underneath this one. It's pushed more down toward the x axis, and it's a little bumpy. It's hard to do it that way. And I advise, I'd advise you to get out your calculator and put in the square root of x all by itself, and then put in the 1 third times the square root of x, or the square root of x over 3. And you'll see that it'll graph this like this, and it'll graph another one inside. Now, had this been 3 times the square root of x, of course, each point would have been 3 times as high, and it would have looped out like that. 